So we're here today with Jake Ben and Deathwish Records, who designed Cave In Until Your Heart Stops. Um, I'm trying to think of the first time I met Jake. Uh, I know when I met Jake. I met Jake at the Piebald Pool Party. I think that was the day that Jerry Garcia died. Yes, the day that Jerry. Was so it? That's when I met you. The day that Jerry Garcia died. Yeah, <laughs> I remember there was an inflatable skeleton that we were uh, throwing around the pool. Okay. And I'm like, oh, it's Jerry. Jerry died. Yeah, not really like. Not really thinking about like the the historical significance of that moment at the time because no. we're just dumb idiots. Yes, no. I wasn't a dead fan then. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but that's I think how we first met. And okay. I think like, the association with art. I think you and Aaron had a relationship going about like yeah talking about art, and that's how we you got involved with designing stuff for us. If I'm not mistaken, my father worked for um, a, a small graphic design company of of, of three people um, most of my childhood. And so I was aware of design and how it worked and, you know, what graphic design was. And I just really loved album covers and just wanted to, like, take a crack at doing my own stuff. And then I started branching out and doing, you know, little things here and there for folks. And when Aaron started Hydra Head in New Mexico, at that time, he had, I think he just had just the Vent record that was out, the Vent 7-inch. And he was, he wanted to do more stuff. And, you know, like, we had all this incredible music that was starting to happen um that was related to you know this universe of bands and uh you know he was the label for that i was so interested in visual art that having presentation that sort of matched the music in some way on a more in-depth level was was part of the goal and i remember i do remember talking to jake about packaging ideas because um, he had been going to design school and so he had been, you know, exposed to a lot of different methods of printing and die cutting and foil stamping and, and metallic inks before most people in our realm even knew what that stuff was. Um, and so I remember when he was working on uh, Until Your Heart Stops, he was like, can we do a gatefold? And I said, sure. Can we do metallic ink? I was like, yeah, why not? Let's just make it a really nice presentation. And it gave the whole thing a uh, greater impact. And I would go over to his uh, apartment with, you know, just like clip art stuff from books checked out of the library or whatever. And he would scan them in and we'd sit there and put them together before I knew how to use the computer at all. Um, and that was also part of my introduction to the, the greater Massachusetts, uh, music scene at the time. And then by the time the Crossbearer seven inch rolled around, I do remember when I saw Jake's design, I was like really excited about how it looked and it just gave the, the record a totally mysterious and ominous and appropriately brutal, uh, presentation as a digital thing was still in its kind of infancy at the time. Mm. Um, you know, like pr creating a record and, you know, putting it together digitally and then delivering it and actually having it manufactured. Like we were all like on like the, it was like an early, it was an early thing for all of us, you know? And like the way I learned type was similar to your experience, you know, doing, you know, half tone things and cutting stuff on grids and laying out, you know, newspaper and magazine like things on, mm -hmm. you know, on, on uh, various grids and graph papers and whatnot and learning how to do that stuff by hand. That was a big deal. So like, even like your original logo is a good example of that where I was playing with just basic ideas of, of multi-layer type, um, deconstructing type, um, making things flawed intentionally and making things have a different kind of energy and kind of fall apart and have happy accidents. And I used letter set type. You used to be able to buy these sheets of alphabets and ver in various different typefaces and you would just rub them, rub them with a pencil and it would transfer onto paper and you'd be able to put together these things that you couldn't really replicate again. They weren't made to be messy. But coming from a punk and hardcore background and being influenced by collage art and trying to make things look kinetic and crazy, mm. um, I loved that, you know, and playing with that. And so, like, um, your original type from your 7-inch, and in turn, ultimately, your um, first, you know, proper logo for me, that's what that is. And that's the original. That's the actual letter set there. Um, cause I, that's awesome. Because I save a lot of stuff. So cool. 
Uh, yeah, you can actually see the depth in it. Uh, at least I can from here. But you can actually see like you know it kind of like is sitting on top of the paper, and you can kind of see where other letter forms land on top of it and stuff. A lot of visuals that were happening at the time, uh, especially in heavy music, revolved around various video stills and approaching that in in a multitude of ways. Um, the cheapest way I could find to do it was by just taking photos of my television and playing with focus so I can get some weird grain distortion and things like that and just try to do something visually interesting with that. Kind of all the inserts to, to your heart stops. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. And with, with that record, you know... I'd, Actually, I'd, there's, some more, there's some surgery in here. There's some surgery. Um, I wanted to just really try to tell a, a visual story through the assemblage of, you know, of, of collage, right? But doing it in a cool, weird, great way. Like, to me, um, it looks like some Vegas cowboy film, too. Well, yeah, it is. It's like, it's, 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 <laughs> that's the thing. it feels Vegas. It, it feels desperate. It feels, you know, a little brutal, a little arty. And I like the sort of, um, I like the blocks of color. I like how everything's sort of like, you know, um, I don't know, almost like hyper colored, you know, and yeah. just like really jumping off the screen or, or, you know, on the page rather. Oh man, you know, I'm actually seeing this for the first time or at least connecting the dots here, but it looks a lot like one of my favorite U2 records, The Inside, which is sure. Uptown Baby. Yeah. And yeah. just like the color choice with like really saturated reds and blues. Yeah. The saturation is really what makes it work. And we were kids putting these things together. Yeah. So like I couldn't have been much older than 21 when we did that record. Mm. Um, yeah, we were like 18, 19 writing and recording it. So yeah, so it's, that's about right. Yeah. Um, and I think that I think you or Aaron gave me the heart, if I remember correctly. I believe, Adam, you came over and you played the record for me at one point. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is awesome. Um, Which was recorded like a half a mile from where you lived at the time. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably less, honestly. Yeah. Like just, yeah, down in the basement. Down in the Kurt's street. basement on Kurt's 30 basement. Plain. And, it's, and it's, there's, a cool, there's a cool cohesion between Beyond Hypothermia and this record, where this kind of feels like a fully formulated idea, where Beyond just kind of feels like, a, like a, you know, the introduction of something. You know? And it really does. It feels like the snip, it's the first version of seeing that stuff and yeah there were like video still records all over the place at the time but i don't think necessarily put together in this way you know um i don't think so no. yeah and i remember just not being prepared for how unique and cool it was like i think every record that you design for caven it's like this progression of coolness and art and leveling up from one thing to the next and then we were just sort of building to this moment and uh yeah it just still looks great super cool i remember coming over to your place when you were designing this record to spell check yeah oh yeah <laughs> that's what we because had to do back then oh i mean even now i mean like you could proofread records you know 45 times there's still gonna be an error somewhere you know? yeah um, but yeah no absolutely because like you never because the the permanency in the weight of that you're like this is it it needs to be right i don't want to have you know like like Steven with a V in there or something or like yeah, you know. spell my friend's name wrong yeah <laughs> so like yeah the way I do it now I, I, like in this it's similar like I try to pass it to a thousand people but there always be there's always something somewhere um, yeah but yeah so that's a you know just a kind of a crash course of this record and you know how it came together so this is a whole snapshot of kind of that era of you know what what was going on back then um yeah, and just seeing, um, seeing it all together is like super cool. It's a trip. Even seeing this, uh, this one today. Like yeah, that's right. the whole front cover, really. That's it. That's the front cover. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't realize. Yeah, I remember. That was actually the front cover. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And Let's see. So if we open this up. Yep. That is. That's it. Oh, wow. This might even be a metallic, but on the CD version, I believe the metallic blue pops quite a bit. Mm. Um, and you, cause you can actually see the sheen of it rather than it getting absorbed into the, in, into the actual paper. Um, it's kind of a thing that happens if you don't print it that way. Um, 
but it's um playing with those ideas was like magic to us we were like oh you can do it because you never know what's going to happen you hope you get it back the right way you know like, yeah <laughs> these are these are days where like you know like they're you had to sort of like trust the process and be like, I really hope the printer understands what I'm doing, you know, because I don't know if I'm totally communicating it the way I, you know, I meant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And finding like a trustworthy printer where you had good communication to make these things happen. Right. Ooh, yeah. I remember when Aaron finally found that for him, he was like always like a Erica records guy back then in Dorado mm -hmm. for his covers, but it took a while like for all of us to kind of get to that point. Uh, but seeing it out like this too, is like super cool because I, you know, you can see like the snippet of that one, like, you know, pile of skulls here. And then intentionally oh, yeah. I, I left that, I cut out a chunk here um, to start calling to the grid. Um, that is the, the inner gatefold. And we need to say that, Back then, doing a gatefold, I mean, gatefolds aren't cheap anyway, but it felt quite luxurious to do this I mean, back we, then. This seemed like it was, yeah, this was very um, luxurious. It was. I mean, yeah, Aaron's 13th, was it the third, well, 31st proper record? Yeah. Yep. Um, it's still early, it's so early in his game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, anyway, I did like, there's like a little snippet um, of somewhere in this frame down there. Oh, back yeah. Over. Um, and that just kind of calls to the grid in the inside. Um, yes. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It kind of looks like, a, um, you know, the Rocking Fawn t-shirts, kind of like what they do now. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> mm. I mean, they're all, they're all punk and hardcore kids, oh, too. Sure. You know, like, um, the thing is, like, nothing's original. Everything no. comes from somewhere. Um, but it's how you put it together and how, especially when it comes to you know, long form albums, right? Like long playing albums, like this you have this huge collection of songs huge collection of visuals amassing it in a way it becomes its own you know unified piece of art and that's super cool you know? yeah um yeah there's some good stuff in I'm, there i'm happy that it still lives on man thank you for everything you did for yeah, us yeah yeah thank you and it's it still looks awesome i think it always will look awesome yeah. and it's cool that relapse is just continuing to keep it alive you know? absolutely yeah absolutely it's good